another kind of therapy that we're talking about. So we have a photosensitizer. We can go after bacteria, we can go after viruses, we can go after cancers. So very interesting therapy. So let's kind of get into a little more of the nitty gritty of it. So basically, it's beneficial also for not only just destroying those organisms, we get the one-two punch because not only is it getting after viruses or cancer cells, it's also increasing mitogenesis and mitophagy, okay? Because it's causing a slight reoxidative stress. And that oxidative stress is what kind of helps those mitochondria recover better. So you can kind of see it here, okay? So we have little Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. And this is kind of the principles here. You can see the photodynamic therapy, and basically we have various light sources. The sun is one of them, believe it or not. Uh, and then we have the photosensitizers. What does it do? It creates reactive oxygen species. A normal cell can usually kind of withstand that little bit of stress, but a cancer cell or a cell that's kind of invaded with a virus can't withstand it, and voila, the cell dies. So that's one of the things we like. And at the same time, we're hopefully getting mitogenesis and mitophagy, good things. Now, this is a new technique. This is literally the first place that this technique has ever been uh, looked at. And, and you know, one night I was kind of laying in bed. I said, what am I going to call this technique where we're starting to activate compounds with our pure light? I said, well, OK, I'm going to call it EPAT, Extracorporal Photoactivation Therapy. You can see on the right there are some of the compounds we've been photoactivating now. We're kind of fooling around. I'm not going to tell you we've got it down pat. We're learning. Okay, I just did an NAD on myself you know, about a week or so ago, but it worked pretty darn good. So these are some of the compounds we think are going to work. So let's get into these a little more. Methylene blue, photosensitizer, and also a mitogenous stimulator. Very important, okay? So it can react with a lot of components of the electron transport chain. And we can see it here in that cytochrome C oxidase again. Now you can see the importance of this uh, electron transport chain. It's not some esoteric thing that just is in the lab with the PhD guys. It's practical. It's important. Okay, so there you are. So methylene blue. It affects cytochrome C oxidase, makes it more effective. More effective cytochrome C oxidase, more ATP. So that's why I like that. So it's also very good for viruses because it gets accumulated in the liver, places where the viruses kind of hang out. What we were doing until just a few weeks ago is giving patients methylene blue and putting them on a red light bed then. Now I said, well, forget that. Now we're just, you know, photo activating it ahead of time, giving it an IV bag and boom, it's done. Be careful with methylene blue, though, if you have a patient on an antidepressant because it increases serotonin levels, which is sometimes a good thing. Again, we talk about depression. Now, methylene blue and mitochondria, I was just talking to Nathan about this yesterday. You know, there's some people out there that say, well, methylene blue is going to really make the uh, nitric oxide not work well, and it's going to make your mitochondria not work well. It's a controversial topic, but I did a deep dive in it, and I think it's really not the case. So you can see here, here's some of the um, important aspects of the methylene blue, some of the dosages that we use. And again, it's affecting the cytochrome C oxidase. All right, so basically, it's a potent inhibitor of nitric oxide signaling in some respects. But what we think it's probably really an, in, an inhibitor of inducible nitric oxide synthase, which is fine if you have a bacterial infection, but with regeneration, we don't care. We don't want to have that uh, increased. So it doesn't really affect the endothelial nitric oxide synthase. But here's the bottom line. Cover your bases. Take a nitric oxide supplement. This way, there's no question. Boom, done. All right, so um, you, again, it can really affect the mitochondria. I'm trying to really speed along, see if we can get to the things. Here's a cute little article about that. And curcumin, another good thing that we use with photobiomodulation. Pretty much what I said about methylene blue holes for curcumin too, except we use a violet light to activate it. Now, I'm still trying to figure out what frequencies I'm going to use to activate it as far as pulsing on and off. We're going to give it time and see, figure it out. But there's some of the things about curcumin. All right, so basically, you can see a lot of antiviral effects. So probably I'm going to start using them both. I don't think at the same time I'll use one, maybe another day I'll use another, okay? So there's some of these pathways. NRF2, important pathway there. Um, again, NAD. Now, I've talked to a couple of people. They were doing it with red light and having pretty darn good results. There's a clinic down in, um, in uh, New Orleans, or not New Orleans, near nearby there, the Spring Hill Clinic, and they apparently have been using some uh, NAD colored lights, somebody that's working with them. Seems to work pretty good, so we'll see. The, the jury's still out. 
but that's what we go there. Now, green light basically can affect certain aspects of our circadian cycle and things like that, and it can also do some good things. And again, you can look at this. I just have something there for red light, and then photomodulation and arthritis, we know it makes joints feel better. We can tell you in our office, sometimes we'll see the patient a week after we do something, they're still sore, we give them some red light, they're much better. All right, blue light, basically similar things, certain pathways that it'll stimulate. I'm gonna see if I can go just a little bit more. Um, interesting thing, blue light stimulates the production of exosomes, another topic that's obviously been in very popular at this meeting, okay? And the ultraviolet light, what does UV light do? Well, that may stimulate heat shock proteins. Again, it's a mild oxidant, a mild stimulator of causing some inflammation, and it stimulates heat shock proteins. And believe me, heat shock proteins are so important in our field. And then you can see here, P53 is one of the heat shock proteins things. Now, I'm gonna figure, finally end up with this, macrophage activating factor. There's something called negalase. It's a protein produced by Lyme disease and things like that. And basically what it does is it turns off our macrophages from working. We're looking into that. We think photomodulation is a way of taking care of this problem. Um, and we have a couple of other things that we're working on, but this is what it looks like here. And it's basically, if you get your immune system working better, and this basically is paralyzing your immune system. This is gonna work better, and we think that this is how it works and how photobiomodulation will take care of it. <laughs>